Hi guys! Good day! It's me, Teacher MJ. Our topic for today's class, it's all about finding the roots using the quadratic formula. So without further ado, let's do this topic. So this is just part 1 of our video class. In the part 1 of our video, when we solve for this value of the square root, our answer is a perfect square. And it would be really easy for us class to find the roots. Now in the part 2 of our video class, this is actually requested from our subscribers and our students. Sir, what if we solve for this quadratic formula and the answer in the square root is not a perfect square? Example, class, when you solve for this one, okay, when you solve for v squared minus 4ac, the answer is 20. The answer is 32. 20 and 32 are not perfect squares. So what will be the thing that you will do if you have this answer? So I will just put the link, class, in the description down below with regards to the part 2 of our video. When you solve and the answer on the square root is not a perfect square, what will be the thing that you will do? So do not be worried, class. We will be explaining that step by step. Alright, let's focus first on the part 1, class. For this part 1, when we solve for this square root, our answer is a perfect square. And once again, it would be really easy for us to find the roots. So let's start with number 1. So once again, first thing to do, class, you need to copy the equation. Okay, you need to copy this equation and you need to get the value of a, b, and c. Alright, let's start. So let me copy the equation x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. And then you find the value of a, b, and c class because we need to substitute those value in this given formula. So our a is beside x squared. So beside x squared, our a. So understood that if we didn't see any number, before x squared, understood that there's 1 here. So our a is 1. Our b is beside x. Our b is 6. And our c is the constant. So our c is the number alone. That would be positive 8. Alright, and once you get the value of a, b, and c, go ahead class. You substitute this value from this given formula. So this will be x equals... Copy negative sign, it says negative b, so x equals copy negative sign, negative, then your b is 6, so negative 6, positive negative is square root of, so your b is 6, once again, b squared, so that would be 6 then squared, minus 4 times, your a is 1, and then your c is 8, so 4 times 1 times 8. Once again, class, if you have a number together with a variable, if the variable are, clo are close to each other, it means multiplication, class. Okay, so it means 4 times A times C. So this will be all over, so 2, copy 2 in the formula, then A is 1, 2 times 1. So once again, 2A, it means 2 times A, or 2A. And then you simplify, this will be X equals, so copy negative sign, and then B is 6, Positive, negative is square root of, so what do you mean by 6 squared plus? 6 squared. So 6 squared, it doesn't mean 6 times 2. It means you multiply 6 by itself twice. So 6 squared, it means 6 times 6. So 6 times 6, that would be 36. Then negative 4 times 1. So negative 4 times 1, that's negative 4. Times 8, that's negative 32. Once again, if you're multiplying unlike signs, the answer is always negative. So negative 4 times 1, that's negative 4, times 8, so times 8, negative 4 times 8, that's negative 32. So this will be minus 32, then 2 times 1 is 2. Alright, so this will be copy x equals, so copy negative 6, positive negative, so 36 minus 32 class. That's correct, that is 4, so that would be 36 minus 32. Do not forget to copy the square root. So square root of 36 minus 32, that is 4, all over 2. So once again, in the part 1 class, our answer in the square root is a perfect square. Is 4 a perfect square? Yup, 4 is a perfect square. So we will know, class, that that number is a perfect square. When we get the square root of that number, the answer is a whole number. Therefore, that number is a perfect square. What would be the square root of 4, class? That's correct. That's 2. How did you get 2? So you find two numbers that when you multiply it by itself, the answer is 4. 
and then 2 times 2, that is 4. So the square root of 4, that is 2. So this will be x equals negative 6, positive negative, the square root of 4, that is 2. And then all over 2. Now since we have positive negative, so therefore we need to separate plus. We do have two answers, two roots, positive and then negative. So this will be x equals negative 6. You start with positive number, plus, then 2 all over 2 and the other one this will be x equals negative 6 then the negative number so na minus 2 all over 2 once again class you have positive negative therefore you have two answers so that would be copy negative 6 you start with positive then copy 2 all over 2 then x equals negative 6 then the minus sign minus 2 all over 2 and then you simplify so what would be x equals negative 6 plus 2 all over 2? How will you simplify this one class? Once again, if you're adding integers with unlike signs, we have negative 6, positive 2. If the signs are not the same, you subtract 6 minus 2, that is 4, and then copy the sign of the larger number. Since 6 is greater than 2, so we copy negative sign. And then divide 2. Once again, if you're adding unlike signs, you you subtract 6 minus 2 is 4 then copy the sign of the larger number copy negative sign so negative 4 all right and then negative 4 divided by 2 so if you're dividing unlike signs the answer is always negative negative 4 divided by 2 that's negative 2 and this will be our x sub 1 first rule that's it plus for the x sub 1 all right, and then let's solve this one. This, this will be x equals. Now, if you have both negatives, you think it this way, class. If you have both negatives, negative 6 and then negative 2, just simply copy negative sign. Then you add the numbers, class. 6 plus 2, that is 8. Once again, class, negative 6 minus 2. Just think it this way. If you have both negatives close to each other, simply copy negative sign. Then you add the number. 6 plus 2, that is 8. So negative 8. Divide 2. And once again, if you're dividing unlike signs, negative divided by positive, the answer is always negative. 8 divided by 2, that is 4. And this will be our x sub 2. That's it, class. That's the answer for number 1. Easy, right? For number 1. Alright, so that's the answer for number 1. x sub 1 is negative 2, and x sub 2 is negative 4. So you pause the video, class. I will be erasing number Alright, so let's try number 2. So it would be really easy class if the number inside this, okay, this, this square root is a perfect square. So let's try number 2 class. Alright, so this will be, so this is 2x squared minus 3x minus 27 equals 0. So once again, get the value of A, your A is beside X squared, that is 2, your B is beside X, that's negative 3, and your C is negative 27. Alright, so let's solve. So once again, you substitute this value from this given formula. So this will be X equals... Copy negative sign. It's already in the formula. It says negative B. So copy negative sign. Then your B is negative 3. So you put parenthesis, then negative 3. Now you will be asking question. Sir, why do you have two negatives? Sir, why do you have two negatives? Once again, class, this first negative came from our formula. It says negative B. So copy negative sign for this for this first negative. So once again, this first negative is came from the formula. It says negative B. So copy negative sign. And then your B class is negative 3. So that's why you have two negatives. This first negative came from the formula. And this negative 3, that will be the value of B. And then you need to put parenthesis. Why is that, sir? Because you're not allowed two negatives close to each other. So that's why we need to put parenthesis because we need to multiply the signs. Negative times negative. And the answer for this one will be positive. Alright, so once again, I hope you're not confused, class. The first negative came from our formula, and the value of B is negative 3. And then positive negative is square root of 
Once again, your B is negative 3. So, negative 3, then squared, minus 4, times your A is 2, and then your C is negative 27. Alright, all over. So, 2 times your A is 2. So, 2 times 2. So, copy 2 from the formula, then A is 2. So, this will be x equals, so once again, negative, you multiply it by negative. So, you simplify this one. So, negative times negative, this will be positive 3. So, positive 3, positive minus, so once again, negative times negative plus, it will be positive. So, just simply copy 3, positive 3. Positive negative square root of negative 3 squared plus. What do you mean by negative 3 squared? Once again, negative 3 squared, it means you multiply negative 3 by itself twice. So, negative 3 squared, it means negative 3 times negative 3. You multiply this negative 3 by itself twice. So, negative 3 times negative 3, that's positive 9. So, this will be 9. Then, you simplify this one. Negative 4 times 2. So, negative 4 times 2, that's negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 27. The answer will be positive. So, negative 8 times negative 27. So, once again, negative 4 times 2, that's negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 27. Our answer will be positive because negative times negative is positive. So, let's multiply 27 times 8. So, 8 times 7, that is 56. 6 carry 5. 8 times 2, that is 16. Plus 5, that is 21. 216 so plus 216 all over 2 times 2 that is 4 all right so this will be so you add this one this will be x equals 3 positive negative 9 plus 216 that would be 225 so square root of 225 all over 4. So once again, you add this one class, 216 plus 9, that's 225. Alright, so this will be x equals 3, positive, negative. What is the square root of 225 plus? You think of a number that when you multiply it by itself, the answer is 225. What would be that number class? So of course, that would be 225. I think that's 15, right? Let's check plus 15. Let's check if we multiply 15 by itself, we get 225. 15 times 15. So 5 times 5 is 25. 5 carry 2. 5 times 1 is 5. Plus 2 is 7. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 1 is 1. So you add. So bring down 5. 7 plus 5 is 12. 2 carry 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 225. So you think of a number that when you multiply it by itself, the answer is 225. And that would be 15. So therefore, the square root of 225, that is 15. So this whole square root of 225, that is 15, all over 4. So you have now, since you're done with the square root, so therefore you, you equate this one class, you have two answers, you have positive and then negative. So two answers, that's positive and negative. So we start with positive. So this will be x equals 3 plus 15 all over 4. And the other one, this will be x equals 3 minus 15 all over 4. Alright, so 3 plus 15, what would be the answer class? 3 plus 15. Of course, that's 18. So this will be x equals 3 plus 15, that is 18 all over 4. 18 divided by 4. Now check class, can we divide 18 by 4? Nope, we cannot divide class because we get a decimal answer. Now, uh, you will be asking, sir, are we allowed to have decimal? Actually class, you're allowed to have decimal, but it will be really complicated class for the roots if you're having decimal. Most of the books class, they always have fractions. Okay, they didn't see any decimal for the roots, so most of the books, it will be fractions. So instead of dividing 18 divided by 4, you will get a decimal answer. Do not divide plus. Just reduce the fraction. Next question. Can we reduce the fraction to its lowest term? Sir, is it necessary? It, it's, is it mandatory to reduce the fraction to its lowest term? 
Yep, it's actually mandatory class in fraction. You always reduce the fraction to its lowest term. That's actually mandatory class. Alright, can we reduce? Yep, we can divide this one by 2. 18 divided by 2, that is 9. And then, can we divide 4 by 2? Yep, we can divide 4 by 2. 4 divided by 2, that is 2. So check plus if you can reduce. Nope, we cannot reduce. So that will be our final answer. Alright, so this will be x equals 3 minus 15. Once again, positive 3 minus 15 if the signs are not the same. You subtract, 15 minus 3 is 12, then copy the sign of the larger number. Since 15 is greater than 3, we copy negative sign. So once again, 3 minus 15, that's negative 12 divided by 4. So negative 12 divided by 4, that's negative 3. Unlike signs, dividing unlike signs, the answer is always negative. Then 12 divided by 4 is 3. And that would be our x sub 2. That's it, class. All set for number 2. Quite easy, right? So once again, do not forget the part 2 of our video. This will be the equation class. It will be quite complicated since the answer and the square root is not a perfect square. So you try this one class. For the part 1, you try this one. And then you put your answer in the comment section down below. Let me check class if you really understand our topic. So x squared. And then you write your roots class. You write the value of the roots. x squared minus 2x. Minus 8 equals 0. So you try this one class and you put your answer in the comment section down below. Let me check if you really understand our topic. Find the roots class using the quadratic formula. Alright, so that's it. I hope you learned something new today. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. You share it to your friends and to your classmates so that we can help more students. Once again class, this is Teacher MJ. Have a great day class. Goodbye for now. Bye-bye.